Hey guys, welcome back. It's Binks. Today, got something special again today. Got another package in the mail today. It says Biggs, so dreamy on it. It's from my dear friend Jessica Bullock out here in Hamilton, Ontario, which is far to the east of me. She's a member of the Hamilton Aquarium Society. She's a master of many, many things. Now, out of the blue, a while back, Jessica does a lot of uh, nature walks and hiking and jogging and stuff. And out of the blue, one day she posted a picture of her holding something. And I said, hey! And she said, hey, I know somebody that works with those. I know somebody that's been breeding those. And she was able to get me some. So that's what we got in our box today. We got a new critter. New critter for the lair. So let's take a peek. <laughs> Got a little note in here, it says, hey Big Z, I believe there are 13 in there, or possibly 12, don't really know. She included some native botanicals for them to chew on <laughs> during their trip. Uh, and now her eyes are completely trained. Ever since she saw the first one on one of her adventures, now her eyes are completely trained as to whether or not every single three to four inch thing that she finds is a stick or it's something like this. So thanks again, Jess, this is really, really cool, over and above. Absolutely love it. Looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with them. So let's get into it. All right, before we go and jump into this right away, we got to start talking about the type of habitat these animals. So she said some native botanicals. So she's collected some stuff. Well, you guys have seen what we've done with some of the different tarantula setups and stuff, depending on their different types of habitats and stuff. And you guys have seen, I'll grant, sorry, all the lights are off, but everything's on timers. And you've seen what we've done with some of the, the real naturalized isopod setups. Well, this animal is part and parcel to exactly the same type of habitat. And that's its habitat right there. Been sitting there ready, waiting to go for it. They live on the forest floor. The same type of job as what an isopod does is the same job as these guys. So we've created this little habitat for them here. It's a nice Alexoterra. The whole top is vented. Uh, the light on top here is actually, I'm just using a small little like a LED flashlight right now, but there's nothing, these guys require really no light whatsoever. That is one of the original styrofoam backgrounds that we've done the, where we've, we've uh, put the silicone on it and, uh, and then added the different substrate to it, let it cure. So it's a fully cured background now, and it looks like it blends in with the forest floor. This is my, my, my mix, my standard mix that I make. And you guys have seen that. I'll put the link to my substrate mix I use for all my isopods and all the leaf litter and stuff in there. And it's nice and deep. This is gonna be absolutely wonderful for them. So let's take a peek and see what she sent. Well, I guess this is my, my bag of botanicals, <laughs> native botanicals. So just like the isopods, as we've done with our isopods, we've gone and uh, collected different sort of botanicals and stuff and used them for the exact same purpose. Now the animal in question are these guys in here. All right. These guys are Narcius americanus, and they are the largest of the North American millipedes that range up here into Canada. They're native to Canada. They're native to a lot of, most of the Eastern states, all the way down to Florida. They can be found all over Quebec and, and Ontario. They are awesome. And they are absolutely no worse for wear, having spent almost an entire week in the mail. As Narcius Americanus has such an extensive range, it is very likely after some taxonomic revisions that the distribution of this species will more than likely represent a complex of multiple species. So as mentioned, these millipedes are temperate terrestrial animals, and they are most often found in forests or in agricultural areas in the soil litter layer, in between under rocks, in between dead trees, piles of moist leaves. 
but they are extremely restricted in the fact that they require extremely high humidity. All millipedes have spiracles on their body segments, which are connected to their tracheal respiratory system and pairs of odines, which are also known as stink glands, are connected to the ozopores. These ozopores release an absolute noxious substance that is produced by the ozodines, which contains large amounts of benzoquinones and in large concentrations could cause chemical burns. Unlike many millipedes, North American millipedes do not release hydrogen cyanide when they feel threatened. Now, if their form of chemical warfare doesn't deter the, deter the potential threat, these millipedes will more than likely just curl up and use their hard exoskeletons as a protective shell. I guess this guy doesn't feel threatened by the big scary man. As he goes about exploring his environment, North American millipedes have two pairs of legs attached to each body segment, except for a few segments at the anterior and posterior ends, which only have one pair. They can readily be distinguished from those of centipedes, which only have one pair of legs per body segment, and they have those highly venomous claws below their mouth. Millipedes to humans are generally harmless. As you can see, they're very motile, using their multiple pairs of legs to move. Each pair of legs moves simultaneously, and the subsequent pairs move in a wave-like motion down the axis of the body. They are capable of moving forward, backwards, side to side, as well as very, very efficiently burrowing into the soil. Narcius americanus and all other North American millipedes are true, devout, detrivores, and their primary diet is the decaying vegetation and leaves, wood, and roots. Now, North American millipedes are play an integral role in their ecosystems as decomposers. As well, they are conscious stimulators of microbial activity and are very important in the cycling of terrestrial calcium. So providing them with that deep bed very organic media. It's kept evenly moist, so they've always got humidity. You can see they'll readily take things such as cucumber and other things like that as a supplement to their diet. They're very easy to care for, low maintenance, unique pets. So with that, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you again to my dear friend Jessica for sending me these incredibly fascinating creatures. I think they're a welcome addition to the lair of the Mataquarist. So until next time, my friends, take care.